Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Yard and Gardens for another one of those daily updates. It's spring, it's summer, it's garden time. I got a lot going on here, but today uh, kind of marks the end of um, a short part of the season for me and that would be the nursery shopping season. A, there's not a lot of it to choose from out here and B, I don't have a lot of bankroll to spend. So, I had to kind of uh, keep things fairly limited. However, I was lucky enough to be able to add to the pepper collection, which is to say I actually have some peppers to grow this year, so we'll take a look at those really quickly. And uh, Shock's Shar there found some, some herbs to add to things, and I am very pleased to say I got a shrub and a couple of trees for the yard. Some nice long-term planting, so yeah, let's get started. So I guess one of the first things we'll show you, I got, I believe this is a Ben Conan black currant, 20 bucks, unfortunately. I mean, long term, that's a great price, right? But I say unfortunately because this one beside it, the red currant that we have, Red Lake or something like that, I got this for $4 clearance at the end of the season. Clearance price is, you know, generally a lot better than at the beginning of the season, but I wanted to make sure I actually got it. So now we have a nice little black currant plant to go with the red currants. I don't think I'm actually gonna plant it here. I just um, feel it's comfortably sheltered from the wind and know that this currant has done well. I just, actually, I need to move this currant too, but that's gonna be a whole different adventure because I gotta work on this porch. Don't want these uh, plants right there getting damaged, so definitely not gonna plant a new one there. Not quite sure where I am going to put it though, so yeah, temporary. Anyway, that's only one of the things I've picked up today. I was ridiculously surprised to find that the nursery I was at today had a ghost pepper. Yes, yes, not that, but it also had a Trinidad scorpion. So we will try growing these with starts that somebody else has taken the time to deal with and clearly won the war on aphids so that that is good unfortunately you know most of the super hots that i grow never get to be much larger than that because of those aphids that i deal with in the world of just plain hots i got a super chili those of you who've been with me for a while you know how much i love these plants they're so abundant they just they just keep putting out so many peppers over the season it's fantastic Lemon balm, oh yeah. You remember the aquaponic lemon balm? Leaves used to be the size of my hand. So, that's going downstairs. Part of that's going downstairs anyway. We'll see what I can get away with. And what else did she get? I didn't even look. A lavender, so I guess that's a type of lavender. What is this? Rosemary, ooh. Nice little rosemary, tricolor sage. I know that one, I've grown that one before. Is that a there's no way that's a green curry. Did she really find it? What is this? Oh, it is a green curry. Oh. If you've never had the opportunity to grow this plant and um, you like Middle Eastern Indian type cuisine, you should, you should find one, give it a grow. These are fabulous. They're so aromatic and it goes really nicely in uh, rices, cream sauces, things like that. It doesn't curdle it, you know? So yeah, this is delightful. I'm so glad she found that. I'm even happier that she found that than that I found those. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that, even though, yeah, $7.60 for one pepper plant. Oh, that's outrageous. And I thought paying a buck each for seeds was ridiculous. Anywho, speaking of um, ultimately expensive price per seed. On that previous trip to uh, the other nursery, I did find a few squash plants. I got some uh, musk melons in here, also known as cantaloupe. I got uh, a few different type of pumpkins. I think there are some zucchinis and some cucumbers. So I'm curious to see how those do. My seeds? Not coming along as well as I would have hoped. Um, they have sprouted, and we'll look at those in a different video next couple of days, I'm sure. But yeah, these look nicer, except for maybe that one in the corner there. But otherwise, yeah, these look nicer. Did find a few other peppers, though. So these little six packs are uh, not terribly potent. It's, uh, what was it? It's jalapenos, Hungarian wax peppers, and cayennes, I think. So. 
I'm hopeful for the Cayennes. They've done well in this neighborhood in the past. Just gonna, you know, have to wait it out though. Long term, it's a whole season thing. But again, I'm pleased to have peppers where someone else has fought and won the aphid wars. As much as I have missed the painful process of starting my own peppers, it's actually a lot cheaper for me to just buy them, as sad as that is. So when it comes to what I actually went to the nursery for today, that would be this little beauty here. It was either this or a Manchurian apricot, which unfortunately they didn't have any of. They had a couple other varieties, but in my zone three situation, I pretty much Manchurian or you can't really be guaranteed much safety. Anyway, what this is, is a Mount Royal plum. So named after a zone in Quebec where apparently it does quite well, based on a European variety of plum, this in theory should be self-fertile. One of the few plum varieties that is, you've got your American plum, your Canadian plum, and your European plum. Anything otherwise and fancier than that requires one of those to um, really bear you any fruit. And it gets worse than that. I believe those plum variants are uh, somewhat specific. You know, some need the Canadian plum, some need the American plum, some need a variant of the European plum. So I'm really glad to have found the Mont Royal because it is, as I say, a European plum. So it's gonna be one of those purpley prune plums. Fantastic stuff. And then last but not least, oh, student of English literature that I am, to go with our Juliet cherry tree. Today, way down here, you'll see we got this little bitty Romeo. Only $20 to get, you know, an, a much smaller tree, granted. It's going to take a few years to catch up to its little friend next door here. But, you know, paying $80 which is what I paid for that uh, plum tree, for something that size. <sighs> you know, it's gonna be years before it bears fruit anyway. I might as well just wait a couple extra years. And it, I would be thrilled to find uh, more of these trees that I wanna get at this $20 price tag, rather than the uh, 80 and 90 that I've paid for some of these others. But yeah, so now we have a Romeo to go with our Juliet. I need to figure out where to plant that. I'm not um, too well versed on cherry growing, but I'm assuming that uh, having two different types of cherry growing will be uh, a good thing and I'll get more production out of it. My camera is flashing at me that I need to charge the battery, so I guess that's where I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for joining me on this super quick video, even quicker than intended, but about where I planned on it. So yes, we ended with a shot of Romeo and Juliet and their solar light, romantic mood lighting. Much love everybody, happy gardening.